Okay, welcome to this review of the Grand California 600. We've been lucky enough to borrow this from Volkswagen for a week. We're here away and we're gonna give you a full walkthrough. It's quite a long video. I'm gonna give you a full walkthrough of the van itself, what we think. Uh, there's some spec things that we probably would change if this was our own van. Uh, and uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've slept in it, we've cooked in it, we've you know, really lived with it now. And a uh, few things which are quite interesting. Um, so stay with us, let's get into it. So this is the Grand California 600. If you're new to looking at Grand Californias, basically it's a Volkswagen Crafter based van. Uh, it's a uh, one of the, the medium wheelbase ones. Uh, so a six meter long van. As you can see, it's got this kind of large fiberglass roof on, uh, which gives you extra head height. It means that you can have a second bed in there as well, but we'll come on to all of that in the interior section too. So uh, under three meters tall, uh, believe it or not. Look, I know it looks tall in the video, uh, but it's under three meters tall. I think it's about 2.9, uh, six meters long. Uh, and uh, we're gonna do a quick outside walk. Uh, so I'll have a look around the exterior, point out different features as I go around, and then we'll uh, work our way from kind of the, the, the cab area through to the kitchen and kind of seating area, then in through the kind of shower, toilet, bed, garage section underneath at the back. So kind of give you our thoughts all over the van. Now we've lived with it for a little while. So let's kick off with the start. So uh, round the outside, obviously, uh, Grand Californias do come with alloy wheels as standard. Uh, these are the standard wheels and tires. So you get normal van eco tires uh, on these as standard in the UK, not all weathers or anything like that. So they're kind of economy based van tire or e economy focused van tires. They're continental, so they're not economy tires, but uh, it means that you get the best MPG possible. And while we're on that subject, when we drove down here, uh, it was a mix of kind of 70 mile an hour motorway. This is a three and a half ton, by the way, um, and uh, some start stop traffic we were in as well. Uh, it averaged 29.1 MPG. Uh, on the way down here and it was minus five for pretty much the entire journey. Uh, so you can see on this one, this has got the uh, chrome pack, which means that all three of these have got chrome on. Uh, you don't get that if you don't order it. Uh, again, depends what kind of look you're going for, whether you want to have a stealthy look or whether you want to have the kind of blingy chrome and stuff, it's up to you. Um, this has got standard halogen headlights. Um, I think if we were ordering one of these, we'd definitely go for LEDs. It just makes it look a little bit more modern and Although we haven't driven this at night yet, we are going to do a night POV video so you'll be able to see what these headlights are like. So watch out for that in due course. Uh, front fog lights are standard. You get adaptive cruise as standard uh, as well, uh, which is obviously quite good. Sarah's inside waving. Um, you don't get a rain sensor, uh, wipers or automatic headlights or automatic full beam as standard. You have to pay for that extra if you want it. So just bear that in mind. Uh, mirrors, um, obviously the, uh, the uh, side mirrors on this that you'll see are these ones where you've got kind of a mirror at the top and a smaller mirror at the bottom. That's great for parking this big van. Um, they are electrically adjustable and heated as standard. What you don't get is you don't get folding mirrors as standard and you don't get blind spot assist as standard. You can buy both of those as options. Uh, if you want them. Uh, so just walking around the rest of the van, um, the space at the top here, this kind of U shape, which is formed at the top, and you can see that, um, that's space for a solar panel. So this one doesn't have it. Um, definitely something I think we would consider if we were having one of these vans. Uh, it would mean that on days like this, you just at least top in the van up a little bit uh, as you uh, drive along and as you're parked on a site. Obviously we're on hookup here as well, which definitely helps. Uh, so coming down the side of the van, obviously this, obviously this is a two-tone reflex silver on the top, Indian grey on the bottom. Probably the nicest of all the two-tone colours if you ask me. Um, quite a personal choice. I know Volkswagen are limiting supply uh, and ordering of certain two-tone colours at the moment, so do check if you're thinking about it. Um, this one's got the diesel heater and you can tell it's a diesel heater from the outside because it's got this square box. If you're looking at a Grand California, it's got a round 
kind of little porthole on the side, that means it's got gas heating. Uh, so definitely worth just checking out which one you might want. Um, from everything I've read online, if you have gas heating, uh, it uses two of the gas cylinder. No, I'll get this, get this right. People take a gas cylinder with them and they can use that in a week. Um, if you're using the heating quite a lot, obviously with diesel heating, you can run it for as long as you want to run it for. Uh, next along, you've got obviously a color coded flap here. This is quite a big flap. This is the one for the toilet and you push it in, fold it down gently. Not like some videos where I've seen people just throw it straight down and really stress the hinges. Uh, so that's your toilet cassette. Uh, it just lifts up, pulls straight out. Uh, this pipe at the top here, which goes in, it's kind of like a rubber pipe. That's for toilet ventilation and I'll cover that when we're uh, doing the, uh, the toilet inside. Uh, so again, quite smart. Um, that's also linked to the central locking. So somebody can't nick your toilet cassette if you're parked up somewhere. Um, I should have said as well, this one, um, obviously uh, has uh, latest Euro emission standard for a diesel, so it has add blue uh, as well. 75 litre fuel tank on this. Uh, so coming down the side here, you've got uh, your hookup uh, like you'd have on a normal California, any van conversion, etc. So just a standard hookup connector as you would expect. Uh, these do come with front and rear parking sensors as standard. Uh, and obviously you can see the normal Grand California rear, and yes, it is tall. Um, there's no question, you know, I'm, I'm standing now with my arm outstretched and it's there. So you're definitely gonna need some <laughs> step ladders to be able to wash it. And I've been kind of scratching my head thinking, if we have one of these, how on earth would you wash it? Um, because I'm pretty picky when it comes to washing cars and vans and I, don't like using brushes and things, but I'm not sure there's a good way around it, to be honest. Um, one thing that you can probably see right at the top there is the uh, reversing camera. Gives you a bit of a kind of bird's eye view when you're inside. It's quite, quite cool, actually. Um, and it means that you can see all of the area behind the van quite nicely. Uh, and being up the top there, it doesn't actually seem to get that dirty either, which is quite good. Uh, obviously, Rear of the van, bulk of it standard uh, standard crafter. Two opening roof, uh, roof, two opening door windows there as well uh, that you can crack open. And then you probably see down the side here. If I go here, you can see there's this extra kind of bulge, which is just on the side of the van. That's really important. They're on both sides, and it means that you get the extra width that you need inside the van when you're uh, when you're sleeping because you sleep across ways in the van this way. Uh, and again, we'll show you that in the inside. It's quite obvious where that extra space comes. Uh, just here, we've got the uh, normal water fill up. Have to say, this feels much more substantial than a standard California for some reason. I don't know why, it's, it just feels like a lot better built. Uh, so a very different kind of style there. You can get uh, mud flaps as options, uh, which I think is quite a good idea. Um, partly because obviously the van gets really dirty and anything you can do to try and minimize that is good. But actually, because you also get this electric step as standard. So this is a fuel step and it rolls in and out when you open the side door. It's currently, the van's currently in something called camping mode, which means that the step is always out. And I have to say, this step is a little bit, um, it grinds a little bit when it goes in and out. It's a bit juddery. And from everything I've read online, that's basically because it's getting dirty and you need to clean it. So I'm thinking if you've got mud flaps on the front, at least you might, might be able to save your step a little bit. And if you have a look here, you can see how much dirt is getting on the front of that step just from driving along. So definitely worth considering. Uh, obviously, if you want to do uh, minor modifications, those kind of things with the van, you can do uh, things like LED front fog lights you could do because you can get straight into the hatch and the wheel arch there. That wouldn't be a problem. Um, I should say that it's got an underslung uh, waste water tank as well. So the main water tank, surprise, surprise, is the other side of this filler. So it's actually sitting in the van about there. Again, we'll show you that on the inside. But the uh, waste water tank is, 
just show you under here. Just there. Uh, so you can probably see that there's a handle which is currently vertical. You turn that horizontal, water comes flying out under there. Um, one thing that this van doesn't have though, is it doesn't have a heated wastewater tank and it's not insulated either. So you do just need to be a little bit careful with that. Uh, there are companies which will take it off and do that for you um, if you want to kind of properly winterize it. Um, otherwise, just need, to, uh, just need to be a little bit careful. What some people do is put a, uh, a kind of a tray or a uh, kind of um, washing up bowl or something underneath the, uh, the wastewater tank, leave the tap open. So therefore you're emptying a block of ice out of a, out of a, um, a tub or a bucket or something like that rather than potentially splitting your uh, wastewater tank. But that's the, uh, that's the external side of the Grand California. Uh, remember this is a 600 version, they do do a 680, uh, which obviously is a bit longer and you sleep long ways in. Uh, but that's the, uh, that's the 600. Let's go and have a look around inside. Okay, so before we uh, show you camping mode, in this big grand, we will just give you a quick tour of the cab area. So seats are in the normal position. Obviously you can see I'm sitting in one. Uh, you've got all the usual stuff in here like heated mirrors, electric mirrors and stuff, central locking things. This one doesn't have automatic lights or wipers, but you can buy that as an option. Uh, you do get multifunction steering wheel with radio controls and stuff, adaptive cruise and things. Normal dashboard in here. So it's not a TFT dashboard like the Ocean. Or the 6.1. Uh, or the 6.1. Sorry, sorry, yeah, 6.1 um, uh, TFT dashboard. Uh, this one has got the chrome pack, uh, like I was explaining outside, which does mean you get this bit of chrome around here. Ooh. So you don't get that if you don't buy the chrome pack. Uh, obviously, grab handles up here. There's a grab handle as well, easy to get in and out. And actually, the storage and things. Grab handles, when you're short, you do need them. And for some reason, on the Mercedes Sprinter, they put them on the door. That's now, weird. A moving target of a grab handle is distinctly unhelpful. A static one on the A pillar. Well done, Volkswagen, actually. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give you credit for that one because it's in the right place and it works. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, so, eight speed um, torque converter automatic gearbox in this. Uh, all Grand Californias have automatic gearboxes uh, and uh, they're all this eight speed. Uh, you do get a button for the side step to go in and out. That's obviously your parking sensor button, traction control. Um, that's to charge your battery to 100% rather than 80. Um, so if you want to boost it, sorry, yeah, leisure, yeah. Ba leisure battery, yeah. Um, they all come with a heated steering wheel as standard, Ooh. which is nice. But you don't get heated seats That's a bit rubbish, standard. isn't it? You can buy heated seats. Um, this is the standard climate control. Um, and in the UK, you can't buy actual climate control you know with the numbers that you'd see in yeah. here and the two temperature things which is a bit turn, of a shame turning knobs yeah so there's it's mm. basically just heat and sorry Fan speed women's temperature <gasps> man's temperature um so that's a bit of, <laughs> bit of a generalization that's but awful. I, it's probably more of a oh i'm cold that's whack what, it that's right what we'll oh i'm hot to do. Yeah. turn it right yeah, down so we'll yeah I, do, I, yeah, yeah um, rather than that because I, I must admit I'm a I'm a full heat person yeah um, so in all California's uh, Grand California's you get this navigation system no other option um, for anything else uh, so you do get the nav you obviously get carplay and everything built in um, again full disclosure we've had to reboot this twice I think already in three days it's where you hold the two buttons down for 10 seconds it reboots and gives you the Volkswagen logo it wouldn't connect to Sarah's phone for CarPlay until we Just did that going yeah there. so and that was no different to our 6.1 that was rubbish as well yeah uh, so that's not not brilliant um obviously no automatic dip uh, automatic dimming rear view mirror or anything and to be honest you don't really need it anyway because you can't see very much out the back I don't know whether you can see anything there but there really is not not a lot a huge amount that you can do the only thing i was slightly do. disappointed about and i know it's a van but there's no mirror yeah there's no, no mirror vanity on, sort of thing on either on of these the, i mean they're massive they are big they're enormous and it does leave a little bit of a gap here which 
Because, yeah. You know, 99% of the time, pain. you can guarantee that's exactly where the sun's going to be. One thing which is quite surprising is the stereo is actually pretty good. It's not bad at all, is yeah. it? Yeah. I think it's got four speakers. I think there's some in the doors by your knee yeah. down there, and there's obviously one at the top the there. there um, they're actually pretty good. Yeah. Uh, glove box, nice big glove box actually in this. Yeah. Um, not, Reasonable. Uh, and this shelf too bad at all. is actually usable yep. as well. So uh, let me just give you some context. This is an iPhone 11 Pro. Um, so and that actually fits does in there. go in there. I think Will's phone would be more at an angle. He's yeah. got a 13, I think. Yeah. And then down like here that. you've got two USB-Cs, uh, obviously a 12 volt, and then a little shelf where you can slide your phone. And then up at the top here, uh, you've got um, 12 volt on this side down there cup holder cup holder on the top some strange little pockets. yeah little I'm not entirely pockets. sure what you use those for but another yeah, 12 another volt 12 over there volt thing here another cup holder yeah, so four cup holders in total and these things you do actually they do seem to be able to be big enough to store something in i'm sure somebody's going to come up with a cover at some yeah. point because it'd be nice to have some covered storage uh, although it's nice to be able to fit these bits and bobs in and then as well LED interior lights, um, and obviously this has got the SOS system and all that kind of stuff in here as well. So um, one thing which is quite interesting, you do get obviously driver's airbag, passenger's airbag. You don't get side airbags or chair curtain airbags, or curtain like or anything like that. You have to pay for those extra. So if you look up there, that little thing there is usually where the logo would be for a side airbag. You don't get those unless you pay extra. Mm. So don't have an accident. Yeah. Right, I think it's time to turn. <laughs> and on the, that positive note, yeah, I think it's time to turn <laughs> these round and get camping. Yeah, let's get camping. So you join us in full camping mode. So you can see we've got the driver's seat and the passenger seat turned fully around, um, very similar to the Cali Ocean or the uh, uh, beach, or even the coast actually. Um, although what you can do is you can get these into the perfect position to be able to swivel them around without opening the doors has to be an absolutely spot on perfect position, but it is doable, which is a good of a bonus good. there. Yeah, it's really, really good. good. So uh, you can see I'm sitting at the table area. So there's a small bench seat uh, for two. It's a very, very tight fit, I must admit, over this side with two adults in it. Most definitely more designed for two small adults or a couple of kids, um, but easily seats one quite comfortably. Um, and you can see this is the Yes camper van table. It's very, very, very thin quite shaped, uh, it doesn't come out quite as far as the one that you actually get with the van and actually goes down and stores against this wall here. So Will's going to pop a little bit of footage uh, on the screen now so you can see what the one that comes with the van actually looks like. So you can see how much of a bonus this is being substantially smaller actually and you don't have to store it on top of the bed which I can't say I particularly like the thought of having to keep lumping it around all over the place. I think one of the, thi one of the things that I've noticed with the Grand Cali compared to a lot of the conversions and a lot of the other um, makes and models of bigger van is that there's quite a big aftermarket set of accessories that you can mm. buy for these. So this is a Yes Camper Van table as we said but you can get other types of table, you can get lots of different kind of bags. Brandrup do a load of stuff for the Grand Cali. There's, there's kind of just a lot of stuff out there as yeah. accessories because it's a kind of a manufacturer's van i think it's almost Again, like the it's, aftermarket it's like people aftermarket feel, a bit feel more confident as to yeah to yeah, put the r d in to make yeah. stuff so yeah. that's nice so this little hook thing here um that's what comes with this table so that you can just oh because it stands hook up hook it back in and it stands edge, in yeah. there and then doesn't flop nice. around anywhere so you can see just behind our cushion there you get a cubby hole down there um, and then on the front of the bench seat, yeah, a couple of USBs in there. So a couple one. of USBs yeah. down there as well. On the front of the bench seat, there is a three pin plug as well. It's important to note that you don't get an inverter in one of these. So your three pin sockets are only going to work when you're on hookup. Yeah. And you've got this other cubby hole here, which. Um, which has got the stupid blind. It's got the, thing the, the silly the... blinds in it, <laughs> um, which. I think we'll try and have a go at erecting the scaffold. We'll at give some a go. Point. We'll give it a go. Yeah. I can't say I'm particularly enamoured <laughs> with the sort. We of haven't it. used it though because Camper Van Bits lent us that windscreen cover, so yeah, so yeah, we've cheated. We've cheated, <laughs> and to be honest, at minus five or six overnight, I'd much rather have a proper thermal windscreen cover uh, than a. And that set of blinds is the magnetic ones for the side windows. Again, yeah. just like an ocean, if you've seen those, they go on around the windows on the inside. The front one though, the front, uh, the uh, windscreen in this doesn't have the pull-out blinds. Uh, like the ocean or the, uh, erect some or the coast, you, you've got basically a piece of material with some scaffolding. And 
you know, we I'm are not, camping, so we'll, you know, we'll it shouldn't it be go. too bad. But we'll give it a go at some point. But I fail to see at this point how having the chairs turned around like no, this and trying to kind of pain. scramble into the windscreen with your sun visors in the way and your rear view mirror and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Which, to be honest, I mean, the rear view mirror, they really could have just left out. It's, yeah, you can't see a lot, you can, can you? He can't see a lot at all in it because of the size of the rear windows. I can't see anything because you can't actually move it down far <laughs> enough for my view to be able to see anything out of the windows. But there we go, anyhow. Um, so you get your window here uh, next to the uh, bench seat. It's got the pull-down mosquito blind. And it's got the pull-up blackout blackout blind yeah. there and you can open the window and and uh, get some ventilation what, in there this lump on the corner here though is quite important because um if you open the window and the heater's on um it will stop the heater from working yeah so you can see it says truma on top of it i think doesn't it it does and i don't know whether that's only if it's on diesel or gas if you if you're running the heater on electric i don't know whether it cuts out because there's no exhaust from electric i don't know so but I to suspect be entirely not, honest should you really have a window open if you've got, you got the heating, heating on, on well time, yeah you? good good point although it, for, for hot water i suppose it, it would stop that heating as well wouldn't it but i suppose yeah yeah yeah. But there we go. Uh, so you've got a couple of storage bits and bobs up yeah, here. Yeah, more USBs. So, and... Yeah, does, there does seem to be a lot of places where you can plug stuff in. They have actually yeah. really thought that through um, in really quite handy places. So yeah, that's great. You can see we tried to do a little bit of decoration there with a, a little <laughs> fake hanging plant. <laughs> Needs a little bit of work to get it sitting in there in the right kind of place. Well, I think. Brought some IKEA hooks with us as well so we yeah. could hook up that yoga tab we did yeah. a video on. Now and that kind of strip that Will's going to point out this for one. you at the moment there, yeah. um, you get that if you've uh, got one of these that has the pull out bed and this and that bit as well because and these yeah <laughs> so th those kind of little hooks they're for the kiddie net and i think you only get that light as well if you yeah, have the, uh, stop you falling out of the top bunk this one. Um, but that strip is where you essentially clip the kind of head bit yeah. in of the bed we'll, over there we'll pop it out this one has got the extra bed up here so we're going to pull that out in a minute we'll show you how that works yeah. see so uh, again it's a kind of one stroke two kiddies bed up yeah. there you can get an adult up there but you most likely would have to sleep at an angle because uh, it's just yeah. not long enough or you can see enough. we've used it for some storage of stuff up there as well which is it's very deep it goes goes a long way in mm. and these roof lights are good as well so we're, they're the wind up type rather than the push up so you, you turn it the right way there it goes there it goes you can see we've still got some ice on there this morning. yeah still some ice on there um double skinned obviously um for insulation and then you just it's really nice actually wind it shut that that's yeah you know, it's blooming freezing out there and obviously in a van with a pop top yes you can open the roof and you can open all of the windows and stuff but you are going to get cold and just having some roof lights up there actually and just keeping it yeah. all a little bit brighter in here is really nice I think a couple of other just quick things before we get that bed out and show you how that works. Uh, good storage above the cab area. Um, and that, it seems like a silly thing to point out, but in, the, so say the Sven head in, for example, it doesn't have that. It doesn't have that area above the cab because yeah. they've taken it away to give you kind of standing height, which I kind of get, because if you stand say, up like, from if there, I stand up here, you know, that, that's there. a problem. But so when you're sitting at the table, you do kind of have to lean forward. And I must admit, I have clunked my head on this a few times because when you're standing here, it's very easy when yeah. you're five foot and a bit to kind of forget that this is here and you yeah. <laughs> back of the head we or can the put forehead. Some pipe lagging on it for you. <laughs> <laughs> or just that but, like really hideous yellow and black warning tape <laughs> that you get at work. But the flip side is you do get good storage with having a uh, bit of a ledge there. And obviously you can have... Um, either storage or the bed at the top there. The bed is optional. Um, as standard, you get a big kind of net and big storage area and here, at the top. if you wanted to, you could put a CB radio in. <laughs> so if you wanted to communicate According to with California the, Chris, yeah. the, the lorry drivers nearby, <laughs> then you could do. Uh, we watch a little bit too much of Outback Truckers occasionally, so... Uh... <laughs> right, let's, uh, let's get this top bed out then. We'll have a quick look at that. Right, so now Will's moved all of the stuff out. You can see how much, I'm just going to pass the camera over, Yeah. how much space you do actually get down there. So it does go... Even though there is a huge bed. You'll, you'll see when I, uh, well. when I get this out. So uh, it comes with a ladder. So, big ladder. Whoa. Um, and I have to say, it's one of the most robust portable ladder things I think I've ever seen. It's got really nice grippy surfaces on here. You're not going to slip off that or anything. So, right. yeah, that's, uh, that's quite Could decent. Could have done with so. one of those in the 6.1 yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> so all you do to get this bed out is you push this button here, 
pull on it like <gasps> that and then that pops out so oh, that okay. comes out there this comes along and lies on there that. that's it yeah. then that and that folds down and then over. And you see there's a, little, there's a little pin or something is there it? is there's a tip just goes in you just need and to be careful you with put your the pin in there plant. and then look at that so if i just i don't think I, take i'm not sure you. i can step back far enough now that's all right put the ladder out so sarah's sarah's behind me at the minute i'm about to shove her out the way right so you hook that on there and then you can climb the ladder and get up to the top bed so as you can see, it's actually not too bad. Um, if I give this back to Sarah. Are you climbing up there? I'm climbing up there. Why He's not? Going for it. Why not? Yeah. Oh, the things I do for this channel. No idea how I'm gonna. <laughs> what was that? It's graceful, isn't it? <laughs> so I'm obviously facing the wrong way now, aren't I? You are, yeah. But if I if I like <laughs> Yeah. Feels a bit like a coffin. It's um, a little bit claustrophobic, I think, but, isn't it? But you would want your head where your feet currently oh, you're are. You're telling me to turn you? around now. <laughs> <laughs> but as a as a demonstration that you know, technically you could sleep an adult. It's possible. Up there, it is possible. It, it is, is possible. possible. Yeah. yeah. And actually, under here, apologies if you can start to hear a dog making some sort of yawny, moany noises. Um, you can see they've they've used the wooden slats. Uh, like the T6 and earlier <coughs> models there. Oh. Right. How are you getting down from there, Will? I don't know, but okay. the, oh, I'm, the, I'm next, shot, the uh, next shot I'm going to be downstairs. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll turn that off now and we'll save him any further embarrassment. <laughs> right. I made it down. I made it down just. Yeah. So I folded the ladder up, uh, just folds in half. And all you do to put this away is exactly the reverse. So flip that over. I should have said there is a kiddie net. Did you say that? I did, a, well, we talked yeah. about it when we talked about those. There's a net which hangs off things, here, yeah. just a safety net if you want it. Um, and then all you do, exactly the reverse. So push the button, button, push that back. That thing should have flipped that away. Thing. Or you flip uh, it no, away. No, you just do that like okay, that. Okay, yeah, and that's it done. Jo job done. And then this... Pop the ladder back. ...goes this way. So it hooks onto I think. those. Does it go that way? I can't remember which way it goes. I think it's the other way, actually, because then... Uh, Oh, it's like to stop it flying around. Yeah. So you, you're supposed to put that there. There we go. And then those... They put down to hold it in place. Do that? Yeah. It's quite Easy. neat. It is quite neat. Um, it is. It, you, you lose an awful lot of space down here. When it's out. It, it's definitely nighttime mode only, isn't it? Yeah. But at least it's an option. At least you can have, I suppose, two plus two. Um, or one. two plus one, really. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, pretty yeah, nifty. Yeah, it'd work. Okay, so we are now in the kind of middle of the van. So if we start at the bottom down here, so in the bottom of the, the seat, inside this cupboard here is where the boiler is, uh, and that also does your heating. And there's so a blower. Does, yeah, it does I'm hot water. To you with my toe. Yeah, there's another one here. Um, so it does hot water, 10 litres of hot water in there, and it also does all of the heating for the van. Uh, you can choose either a diesel one, uh, or a gas one. It comes as standard with gas. Uh, you can upgrade it to be diesel powered if you want. It saves you using gas all the time. Um, this little panel here, if you open it up, uh, is a little panel from Truma. They're the people who make the boiler in here. Um, the switch on the side here is if you're somewhere which is at a high altitude and you've got the diesel heater, you can turn it over and then it means it, it still runs uh, as it should do. Um, there is a frost protection valve in the bottom there as well. Uh, so if you've got water in the van uh, and it goes below, I think it's three degrees C, um, it will dump all of the water out to save it from freezing. Uh, the easiest way to be able to manage that is just basically keep the van a bit warm. So run the heater on 10 degrees or so and it'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, this panel on the side here, uh, it's a little touchscreen panel, allows you to control lights and camping mode, which allows you to keep the step out outside, those kind of things. Uh, it also lets you control the um, uh, heating for the van, the hot water. Uh, you can see your water levels in here, so fresh water and grey water, battery level, those kind of things. 
Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's good. It gives you the indoor temperature of the van. It gives you the outside temperature of the van as well. Quite a handy little panel. Uh, we did have a problem with the heating in the van um, and um, basically it switched off during the middle of the night. Um, the, the way that we've solved that uh, or what we've read about is that some other owners have had this issue and it's a bit of an issue with this panel talking to the Truma panel at the bottom because you can actually run the diesel, uh, you can run the heating system from the panel at the bottom or from this normally. And all they advise you to do is just unplug a little cable from the back of the panel on the floor and then the heating will work perfectly. You have to control it from the panel on the floor. It's basically some kind of gremlin in yeah, the electronics. It's going to be a software the update two, or the two things something talking like to each that. other, which is a bit of a pain. But that said, now we've unplugged the cable, it's worked fantastically. Uh, so, um, yeah, just a, a minor gremlin there, but obviously we want to be honest with you about our experience with the, uh, with the Grand Cali. So. Yeah. So I did take the dog out at 7 a.m. or something yeah, at home yeah. in the freezing <laughs> cold, and I was like, yeah. I can hear dripping. Yeah, and then the frost protection valve kicked in, and yeah, know. and that was it. Yeah, yeah. so uh, definitely. So worth it's great in terms of you know you're not going to end up worked. freezing all of your water in the van, which you don't want to do. But also, yeah. you know, if you want to keep your water in the van and leave the heating on, but you also didn't want that to happen. Def definitely worth just checking that out if you ever have that kind of problem. It's quite well documented online. Right, so next is the kitchen block. So, uh, yeah, not, not a huge amount to say about this really, but uh, this one's got an outdoor light, which you can have as an option, um, obviously controlling your indoor lights, and then that's a button to turn all the lights off, which is quite nice. Uh, pull out table here, so a little kind of extra extension. Doesn't look like a lot, but it's enough to put a couple of cups on or a couple of beers. Kind of, yeah, something while you're just prepping something. Uh, fridge is at the bottom here, so pull out fridge. You've got uh, a kind of bottom compartment. Uh, you've also got top compartment there. We don't eat. <laughs> no, they're for the These dog. Are for the dog. Uh, <laughs> the treats. <laughs> that's, a, that's a drip tray for any ice. And then you've also got an ice box in here as well. Um, Handy for frozen carrots. Yeah, there's lights and things in the top here when you open yeah. it at night and things. And this front area of it, is tall enough for you to be able to put tall things in with that shelf there as yep. well. So a couple of bottles of milk and stuff, and that's that. So that's uh, that's quite handy. Uh, you've got... Apologies for this. Yeah. Place. I mean, we've just chucked stuff in here, obviously, but this is a uh, kind of cutlery drawer, come Utensil kind of, drawer yeah, emergency and... screwdriver drawer. Um, <laughs> so that works, uh, seems to work quite well, actually. Uh, you've got a normal Dometic hob, um, different size burners in this so they're not the same size in the Callies they're actually the same size and for us with the Bellman that one being a bit smaller is perfect absolutely no, loving no that. No flames licking up around um, the side of it. But again your usual kind of gas in here and works exactly as you'd expect it to yeah. so uh, nice um, nice Dometic hob. Uh, the sink in here uh, as you'd imagine hot and cold water um, this has got the updated tap so it doesn't have problems with the water pump and things which there was an issue on the earlier Grand Callies with that uh, but they fit these as standard now. Uh, you don't get a sink bowl um, at all uh, with these, it's literally just the stainless sink and actually I think that's alright. I, I, the bowl in the Cali we always ended up taking out and putting somewhere while it you use the sink. It became a storage it was, area for It was just stuff, oh, a pain. It? But that said, we brought too much stuff with us because every yeah. time you want to use the sink, we've ended up trying to take that stuff out and it's just like, oh, yeah. come on. We need to think of a solution. Yeah, yeah. We'll so think it, of something. There's something going to be better for that, but yeah. yeah. Um, and just another Ikea Yeah, we whacked another the, hook uh, on there just for tea towel and things. A couple of 240 volt sockets again if you're on hookup you can use those and i use those to dry my hair actually stand there yeah. and do that yeah and you can see here this this isn't actually a mistake will's figured out that you can put your kitchen towel in this cupboard yeah and then so, sort of dangle it through yeah the dangle gap, it through and, there and then you've got a dispenser and uh, you, there we go you have to be quick on the rip though <laughs> it does work looks like um, he's got practice at the other thing uh, you get with the 600 is this funky pull out table here which Looks like it's a bit of a kind of faff and everything, but I have to say, making coffee and using the sink, if you need to do something with the sink and then something with both burners, like doing pasta and you're draining things or whatever, and you need that extra bit of space just to 
put your washing up liquid or whatever, it's actually quite a good space. Um, so somebody's actually thought about that. I thought it was going to be a bit... You put the kettle on it this morning, didn't you? I did. Because you've obviously got your plug sockets nearby. So yeah. A little I, electric kettle. I thought it was going to be a bit of a faff, but it's actually you pretty You need to nifty. move a pillow out of the way, don't you? It's not the end of the world. Uh, so finishing off here, then we've got this little flap where you've got the main gas control for the hob. If you've got gas heating, that would also work for the gas heating, but in this one it's diesel, so yeah. uh, it's only this one which is on in there. And then you've got a couple of actually quite big um, square rectangular, uh, rectangular yeah. drawers here, which actually seem to work quite well. I was surprised how much you can fit in mm. these. Um, it's not bad at all, and they are soft close, soft close. which is great, but also makes me forget to big. actually close the yeah. uh, proper things. Our, yeah, our plates are too big. If you've got some slightly smaller plates, you'd be able to fit them in there. No problem at all. Yeah. And you can operate it with your toe, which is a bonus. Really? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to tell you that it's because his knee hurts and he can't bend down my knee, properly. My knee does so, hurt. Nothing yeah. to do with the grand. I've just hurt, got a poorly knee. No, he, he picked up a puppy, basically. Yeah, that, that, was, that was the entire... <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> the entire did. damage that was done. <laughs> right, let's have a look in this bathroom then. And right, we've changed the view just the so bathroom. we can manage to show you in the bathroom. Yeah. So. so, big door, which I like the big door. Problem is, is if you have a step to be able to get onto the bed, which you might just about be able to see down mm. there. So there's a foot, folks I can have handily provided as a, a fold out step. Um, you can't then open the door for the yeah, bathroom. So it's tricky. kind of, yeah. Slight design flaw there, but hey, so you can see the door's shaped and it actually doesn't, you know, it's doesn't shaped with anything. the bed, it's shaped with the bed, so it doesn't hit the um, kitchen cupboards and it doesn't hit the bed. Uh, and then there's actually no shower curtain in here either, so I'm just going to come further in here so that Will can kind of follow me here. So, yeah, you have your shower in here and all of the water just stays in actually. So there's, you can see there's a little bit of a seal along the bottom of the door there. There wasn't originally on these. Was there not? No, okay, they've there updated is a, the there design is one on now that. Then. <laughs> but um, I can honestly tell you, Will has had a shower in here and there was no water that ended up in the kitchen no, area. it was good. Uh, it did work. Um, it's all very clean, kind of clinically wiped down stuff. It's very white, obviously, um, but easy to keep clean. The only slight downside, obviously, is that everything gets wet in here. Uh, if you use the shower, so toilet, everything, it gets wet. But what you do, this sink here, um, that tap is the shower head as well. Yeah, so you, you pull, pull it, that out, pull it and, out you and then you can clip it into this thing up here that holds it. You can see you've got another skylight up at the top there with a little blind that can go across it as well. And I think what I have noticed in here, when you come in in the morning, we, we, we've had the heating on all night on fairly low. You come in here, whatever the heating is out there, it's roasting in here. Yeah, there is a... Um, <laughs> it's uh, down, at, down at the bottom here, there is a um, air another vent. There's blower. And uh, yeah. it does actually manage to get the floor quite warm. So I was concerned that because it's air heating rather than the um, underfloor kind of heating that you get in some of the other vans, that the shower tray would be really cold to stand on. And it's not actually, it keeps everything lovely and warm. Yeah. The only downside of this kind of type of sink that I've found, I like to wash my face and you can't run a bowl of water because you're basically yeah. using a shower head yeah. and it's catching it in there. So it's fine for washing your hands. If you're okay washing your face, just doing a, yeah, a you'd splash You'd have to do it in the kitchen. Shower head, otherwise or you, take, you, you can take sink. that out, I think. It, it pulls out and then you can use the little... Yeah, but of, that's really that's tiny really, then, isn't really it? Tiny, you're not going to yeah. be able to do anything with that. Yeah. Um, but you can see that... I, well, I can see in there that because there's a plug hole on it for some reason. It's getting a bit grim mm. down there. So you need to clean, clean that. Clean. So that folds out of the way, and that's your shower space then, which is perfectly adequate. Actually, it's, it's if a good, the door was it's closed, a, it's a good size actually. No yeah, Sarah's standing there. In there now, and because the door's curved, it, it creates does a little bit more space. A bit more space. So up here, you've got your mirror here. You can turn that, and then flip that out of the way. There it gives you a bit more access to all these shelves. Like if we were having one of these, do some kind of thought about how you actually keep stuff still because you're just going to stick bottles in here it's going to rattle like mm. crazy as you're driving around and stuff kind of bet, flying around all I over bet the place. Thought about somebody that somebody will have thought about it somewhere I suspect. Yeah. Um, very very easy to forget about this. Yeah, <laughs> you need to put that. <laughs> put that there and don't try and open the 
yeah. mirror door without. I think they are actually there. plastic. Um, yeah, and then you've obviously got these lights up here, the, and the, the lights light come on and off with automatic. the PIR. Yeah. So that's a little sensor up there. So you come out of the bathroom and it does switch off. And um, this is the flush for the toilet. I don't know if you want to see oh, that. No. So that's the flush for the toilet. It's electric. And you've got your little thing at the bottom there. Just open the cupboard a second because this one's got the toilet ventilation. Oh, this one here. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So. Yeah, that's yeah, quite that, important actually. You do actually get a toilet roll holder. Yeah, that um, <laughs> that green cylinder there is optional, um, but it's a filter. So when you open the toilet flap... Um, is it worth me doing that? Would you hear anything? Uh, probably no, not, probably you? not. But you open the toilet flap and a little fan comes on, which extracts all of the odours. It goes through that filter and then outside the van. So that kind of typical uh, chemical toilet smell that you might... Uh, might smell occasionally from a porta potty or anything like that you don't get in here no um and i think that that's genius it's really nice actually there's been zero smells of any kind of chemical yeah at all Which it's been good. very very good yeah so right then go. so let's get on to the rear bed right so will's just climbed into the bed there and you can see i just <laughs> popped the little stool gracefully again out for him um he probably doesn't absolutely need the stool i definitely do um otherwise yeah, I've got no idea how I'd get up there actually. Um, but so, it's a comfy bed, actually. Com comfy bed. Um, so in terms of, so I'm six foot one, and if I lie here, so just so to show I've that got his head's not touching there. I've got the width of my hand. There's a bit. Yes. There. Four fingers. Yeah, and my feet are flat against the wall. They there. are just touching, aren't they? So it's not it's not massive in space but it's certainly okay but you don't sleep like that do you you sleep on your side i do yeah because if he sleeps on his back he snores so he gets an elbow in the side <laughs> there is a there is a light directly yeah, you can above be particularly here evil to your partner and there's two so there's you two. can lean over in the night and turn it on yeah, really. <laughs> to full blame the van obviously yeah, it's like yeah. oh what's he doing that for he's lovely isn't he <laughs> I think what I actually really quite like that somebody does seem to have thought about this is, special is switch. these buttons there to actually lock and unlock the van. Yeah, so uh, you can lock can and unlock um, from lying in bed. So when you get in bed and you think, oh, oh damn, damn it, I haven't locked the van. <laughs> Didn't lock the van. There it is. Yeah. So that's that's good. A couple of USBs back here again um, in this little plastic pocket thing. So Sarah was complaining about wanting to have a clock. Um, so I think a little USB powered clock or something yeah. back there, charge your phone or something. You've got the same over there, Be just good. without the USBs. No USBs, but basically. there is another light over here if you want it. Yeah. And then obviously you've got all the cupboards. And so a hanging rail. And a hanging rail. I, I still don't really understand why there's a hanging rail. Slightly odd. A, a cupboard would have been a bit more useful. So we've got cupboards. Um, Packing cubes. People have things. different opinions on whether these are good, bad or indifferent. Having lived with them for a few days, actually they, they're all right. I don't think there's too much of a problem I with think them. The only downside for me is um, I can't reach any of them unless I'm sitting on the bed, really, uh, mm. apart from this one that's closest to the sink. So um, yeah. there's a lot of scrambling around on my knees of a morning or an evening getting undressed or dressed. I, it's about being organised, yeah. as, as just like it is in a normal Kelly. You just need Kelly, to find your about way being around, don't you? I've seen online people put like bungees or uh, nets and things so you can load more into these without them. Uh, things falling out which I think is probably a really good idea um, we've obviously used our soft bags and things as well uh, which does help this one at the back here it's already got one already comes with a net from the factory and the cupboard goes all the way down oh does it to the edge yeah so oh, if I, I that. let me just uh, stick my arm in there so yeah it goes all the way oh, yeah. in there so in terms of packing stuff you can get some really really good storage in there uh, on both sides you so need to not forget that it's there yeah and then obviously at the back here <laughs> a nice once again like. just give it it's probably a bit frozen i'm gonna say it? that's uh mm, maybe we won't yeah don't go there we go, go. <laughs> yeah. just hasn't been open for a while and this one opens really wide oh wow um so again in a hot morning or whatever being able to let some air out the top yeah. Because uh, hot air rises will be fantastic. Yeah. Um, ambient lighting all the way around, as you can see. Yeah, you can get really an option pleasant, of a multicoloured LED strip, which runs in this bit, is an option. This one hasn't got it, but could be quite funky if yeah. you're uh, looking to jazz it up a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, and then just... there's 
I was asking Will about this last night, of what on earth this actually is. This random circle in the ceiling. And uh, it's apparently a vent. it's a vent. Yeah, they've obviously done some modelling about airflow uh, and condensation and things, and it's a vent in the roof. And yeah. I have to say, zero condensation in here. nothing damp in here It was all, at minus there? five again last night. We had the heating on at 18. Obviously, two of us and the dog. We had the uh, camper van bits windscreen cover on. Didn't do anything else special and nothing was dripping in the morning. Well, I'll tell you what, those back windows, they've not been opened yet today, have they? That's right. There's nothing on those. That, that water that you can see is actually on the outside, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. So that's, um, that's all good. Yeah. Um, the middle section of the bed can fold up so you can walk all the way through the van if you want to or load anything big. Again, I'll put a bit of footage in there so you can see that. Uh, it does help you get into the cupboards a bit easier if you want to as well. But generally speaking, actually quite impressed with the bed in this, as standard. Uh, you yeah. can buy toppers and all that kind of stuff aftermarket if you want. I think you can buy replacement is probably about mattresses. What, three inches thick, something like that, and it's on the um, Frolly Springs. Yeah, um, probably something like quite that. Quite nice. Yeah. Um, Perfectly acceptable. Very, very impressed actually yeah. with the comfort of the bed. Yeah. And on that note, if you did just hear the dog groan, right. I think we Let's, might uh, have reached the end of, of puppies. Of inside. Uh, well, so, and of puppies' tolerance for us walking around and yeah. her being in a crate. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's finish this off with a bit of what's in the garage at the back. Yeah. So I've just popped the bed up. You can see there it just uh, holds up at the side. You get these straps and everything. So it just holds it out of the way. Um, thought it'd be useful just to show you, <laughs> not, not the dog in a crate, but this is how we've been traveling with her. And we bought some uh, clip-in um, airline rail um, clips at the back and some straps. So we've been able to secure her crate in there. So it sits hard against this section in the middle and that's where the pipes and electrics go across the uh, side of the van. And for traveling, this is how we've kept it in here. And as you'll see, it's really nice and solid. So I'm just gonna nip around the back of the van. I'll whip that out and then obviously I can explain to you the, uh, the cupboards and the garage area. Another quite nice feature on this that I forgot to mention earlier is these. So you get fly screens which pull across like that. And Sarah's wrestling, <laughs> Man handling the dog. wrestling with Roxy. Hello. But they come Sit across down. like that. They're, they're not super strong, so. No, I wouldn't trust the I think puppy at not the moment to. Um... We wouldn't trust the puppy there, but does mean uh, in summer you're able to pull those across, have a bit of airflow through the van, which is nice. And also you get this little pull out shelf here. So you got, again, a 214 USBs. And I can just imagine Sarah passing me a nice cold oh, Can I not imagine beverage. Will passing me something instead? I could be in there, I could pass Sarah a nice cold beverage <laughs> outside. And then these just slide away nice and easily like that. So nice nifty little feature. Right, so we're around the back. I've opened the doors up. Obviously, uh, normal California chair is identical to the one in the ocean. So um, if you uh, find that you get a bad back by sitting on the ones in the ocean, you think it's going to be any better in the Grand. It is not. They're just as uncomfortable. Uh, and uh, you also Way get... to sell it, Will. <laughs> uh, you also get um, the outdoor table as well, which is the same uh again so, so if you hate sitting at that yes yeah, so if you hate sitting at that you're going to still hate it if you've got a grand uh these blinds in the back uh, you probably saw them from the inside a nice concertina blinds again fly screen on there you can open these as well so again just like that so you've got a bit of airflow when you're lying in bed or just to vent the van it's quite nice and easy to do that so uh, then we get to the back here so we've got uh, a light in here uh, you've got a uh, cigarette lighter socket in the boot, although obviously you're not going to have a cigarette lighter in there. Um, 12 <laughs> volt, have, I think, is what we call um, it. Now. 12 volt. Yeah, you've got 240 in here as well if you want it. Uh, this here is a shower. Um, so, again, if you've got a Cali at the moment, this looks fairly familiar in terms of fitting. This knob, though, is the important one, and that's because it blends hot and cold. So, you can have a nice warm shower if you want to, but obviously, um, Washing off the dog's feet, giving the dog a bit of a hose down, etc., um, is slightly nicer uh, when you've got warm water, and that will be very much recognised um, from 
Cali owners who have got the shower because it's exactly the same tray. So over on this side then, just open this cupboard up. This is the gas locker. So that whole piece comes out. And in here, there's space for two gas cylinders. If you've got diesel heating, there's actually only one place to be able to connect gas. Uh, so for me, if, we're, if uh, this was mine, I'd be unscrewing that off there and using all that extra space, obviously not blocking off the gas vent at the bottom. Uh, but uh, some people have even used the little tiny 907 cylinders in here if you've got diesel heating, because it's only running the hob and it lasts for ages. If you've got gas heating, people do use two cylinders in here. There's an automatic changeover valve. It's also got crash protection on the valve as well, uh, which is really nice that they thought about safety. And it means that you don't have to always get in the back here, turning valves on and off as you drive along and everything, because it's all part of that crash protection system, which is really good. And then finally, over this other side, we've got two lockers. Uh, the first locker, when you open it up, it's a big space, but, Unfortunately, there's no shelves. Um, now, Joe at Yes Camper Van will supply you some shelves if you want them. Uh, he does do them. Uh, you have to buy them. It's not a Volkswagen option from the factory or anything like that, but he does do custom shelves to fit in here, which I think basically is pretty essential because otherwise it's just going to be a massive pit of stuff that you've got in there and <sighs> you're always going to end up emptying it trying to find what you want. But it is a nice big cupboard. And then last but not least, we just hop inside. This one here is the cupboard where the secret electrics are. Now you probably can't see that too well, but there's a big red switch in there, which is the main isolator from the leisure battery. You've got your 240 volt circuit breakers in there as well. A load of fuses and other bits. And then under this flap at the bottom here, it's held with magnets. You've got a couple of valves and that's so you can completely drain the water out of the whole van. So hot and cold, it's the lowest point in the van and those taps drain straight outside. So there we go, that's the uh, garage area. This channel here on both sides is so that you get, you get two boards which come with it that you can slide in. And it means that if you've got big heavy things under the bed as you drive along if you brake hard obviously it saves them going all the way to the front we didn't bring them with us on this trip because obviously we had roxy's uh, crate in the back here but at least uh, there's the option if you want to carry large objects in the back you can do and it is a big space actually when you look at the size of it it is a big space brandrup do carpets and things to cover all that up if you want to you can see we've reuse some of our camper van carpets in the main living area just for this trip and again Volkswagen do some nice carpets for all of that as well uh, and then just looking around the other bits and pieces obviously the winding handle for the awning on the side is there we'll uh, overlay a little bit of footage of that coming out uh, but it's uh, it's pretty standard really apart from it's much more heavy duty uh, those are the awning on this is far far bigger and far heavier duty than the one on an ocean you can wind it out all the way without putting the legs out then put the legs out is it it's, worth uh, talking really, well about really um, strong the the awning and the, and the strengthening that needs to be put in for it yeah uh, I mean, so if you don't have it as a definitely. an option from the factory it becomes a very difficult thing to get that, one retrofitted that's right yeah so the um uh, when you look at the uh, the awning on the side there um they are an option, so it doesn't come with it as standard. And if you don't order it from the factory, adding one afterwards is a real faff. It's not as though it can't be done, because obviously it needs strengthening. It's actually mounted on the fiberglass, but much, much cheaper and easier to do if you order it from the factory. So uh, yeah, definitely worth bearing in mind. And you can get them in either white or black as well as an option. So there you go then, that's our full tour of the Grand California. A few opinions in there as well from us. Uh, we're gonna do a uh, bit of a wrap up monologue about it as well, just what we like, what we don't like, what we think, and hopefully that will give you a bit of insight into us living with one for a little while. I think what we might need to do though is we might need to do a what's it like compared to an ocean. Probably, uh, because yeah, that might be useful, might not it? That will be really useful for people. So yeah. we'll, uh, we'll see whether we can manage that as well. 
And uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully that's been useful for you. Right, we need to put this van back together. We do. And we need to get home. We do. Boo. <laughs> so thanks very much for watching. Hopefully that's been a useful tour for you. If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. If you've got any questions about the Grand Kelly, please do let us know in the comments below and we'll endeavour to get back to you. Thanks very much. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.